Hey there everybody, Joe here. I'm turning this metal pole into an aspen tree trunk. And so I thought I'd take a minute and show you how I do this effect. You can see that I've started here and I'm gonna show you just how to build this aspen tree trunk pattern. And you could definitely do it on a flat wall too, uh, but this is fun for me to paint it on this round metal pole. So down here you can see I've got a lid that has the that gold dot of paint down there. That's that's a gold brown and a darker brown. And then I have black, and that's a rust-oleum quart of black right there. And then I just have a white mix right there that I put a tiny bit of orange or red and yellow. This layer right here is the same white, but I mixed more of that orange of the red and yellow and some black so that it's a, you know, a light beige for lack of a better description. I'm just gonna use the pure black to show you this pattern. It, it has these eyeball looking patterns. So you might have where a branch uh, started to grow and then broke off at some point and they grow in these rings going out and they grow usually out from one of these ridges. And then as they expand, it pushes that ridge up. And so you get what looks like the top of an eyelid. And that's kind of what makes that eye shape. And when I do the black, I like to highlight it with the brown. So I'll, I'll take this golden brown mix that I have. And I'm just grabbing a little bit off that lid that I have. And I'll just put it right on that black and then some of the white. So while I'm waiting for that to dry so I can put some highlight and shadow on it to make it look like a more three-dimensional ridge, I'll start making the lower part of this trunk too. I'll start with just black. And I want to work in a small enough area that it's not going to dry before I can get to it and blend it. I'll take brown right here and I'll just add that into my mix somewhere. And then watch this pattern. I'm going to go a strip here of the bark that I want to be raised up from the shadow. I'll put another one next to it and I'll leave black in between. And I put that light strip right over my brown. So I've got a brown and white mix. The pure white looks too gray, I don't like it. And then when I get above it, I wanna, I wanna stagger it so that now the shadow is on top of the light area. All right, then I can pull out a little brush and then I'll start trying to chop this up a little bit so that it doesn't look like those big fat brush strokes and try to add a little bit of bark texture. And then I can add in black and I can add in the light color too. I can add them back in with this little brush and focus more on little details. And you know, maybe, you know, there's old, old ridges can get real big and gnarly. So maybe this is, this is a ridge going around the whole tree right here where I already have it, have it connecting. So I'll make a ridge here. Just bring it around both, both sides here and just make the shape kind of real messy. Add the brown and the white. I'm going to get my light color that I showed you. This is just the pure white mixed with a tiny bit of orange. And I'm going to put that pure white on the top of each of these. Pretty much everywhere I have a dark scar on this tree, I'm just going to highlight the top where the white bark meets it. Put some in here and you, you can see how very similar these colors are. This is just barely lighter. If it's too extremely lighter, it's, it's not going to have the realistic effect. You know, you can, when you go back and forth working those colors, you can get things to look more and more kind of randomized and natural looking like a real tree. Put some of this white down here on the... So you can see I'm just going to make a real, a very light brown, just very light. I want it to be barely darker than the rest of this tree. And I'll start doing the bottom edges of these ridges. And I just do that pattern all over the tree. I'll do all these ridges and eye looking shapes all over the top and then make it starting to split as it gets lower till it becomes that completely brown, dark, splitting tree bark texture. 
at the base. I can do real light layers, you know, if I want to accent some of this, make it a lighter color. If I want it to look like the bark, I want to make it a little more brown. If you want rich colors when it comes to layering, or some people call it glazing, dark over light makes rich colors, light over dark always makes grayer looking colors when they're transparent. Thank you everyone for watching my video. I want to make more of a habit of doing this. I'm going to take some comments from viewers on some of the previous videos. These comments are on three key elements of painting waves. Jose Gomez says, thank you for the info. I always learn something different from your tutorials. Thank you so much, Jose. That's very kind. I, I do try to put new information out and information that I, I have truly been helped by. And, and so it's nice to hear that it it's, seems like something different and not the same old thing that everyone else is saying. I do want to try to fill the empty space out there rather than just saying the same old things. That's very encouraging. Chris T says, I can only imagine the person who hit the dislike hit the wrong button. I think the same thing. I don't know why people hit the dislike button, but there's only a few. Nothing is for everybody. So I have to respect those who don't like the video. We all need a few dislikes. Girly Girl uh, 5502 says, how would one paint exposed tree roots? I paraphrased these comments. They're longer comments, so I'm sorry for not reading the entire thing. I just want to get through a lot of them. The first thing I do is I go out in, in their natural environment and just start observing what they look like. I look for what are the repeating shapes? What kind of shapes do I see repeating when I look at exposed tree roots? Actually, you know, when I, when I go jogging up on the, on the mountain, there's tons of these aspen trees and they, those roots just go across all the paths and it's, it's just like that kind of thing. You want to consider the shape so that you know where the highlights go and where the shadows go. And then you want to consider the color of the object and what the color of the light is because you want to understand what the color is going to be when you mix the color of the light with the color of the object. So brown root and let's say bright orangey colored sunlight. Sunlight that's direct here is these kind of orangish. So then you're just, you're going to have a much brighter orangish tan, you know, real light, maybe peach color for if, if you have sunlight hitting those roots. But if you just have indirect light from the sky, that's much more of a blue light. And when blue light hits brown, it makes a grayish violet that is in between the brightness of the brown root and the blue sky. So understanding what the resulting color will be depending on the color of the light source and the color of the object. <laughs> uh, those two things. Uh, light is very consistent and predictable in the colors that it makes. And I know that there's a lot, lot more to it. I should do a video on that. It's, it's a real interesting subject. So perhaps I will. We'll see. Dennis McCool says, Awesome, thank you, I'd love to buy it. Uh, speaking about the painting in that three key elements to painting waves, and thank you for that very kind compliment, Dennis. I will have it for sale. Right now we're looking at August 5th for uh, the starting date of me showing this collection of oil paintings that I'm doing right now. August 5th will be the first Friday of the month and here in Flagstaff, Arizona, where I live, we do the first Friday art walk where all the business is downtown stay open uh, past their normal hours and people walk around looking at all of the artwork and having a good time. It's, it's a cool tradition that we have here in this little mountain town. Uh, also, August 5th is my birthday, so that'll be on my birthday. So I hope, I hope a lot of people can make it to that, to that showing. Uh, Sailor White says, do you paint on the smooth side or texture side? Uh, the, again, I've, I've just clipped out a little piece of this comment. Uh, I mentioned that I paint on masonite board, so he's asking, do I paint on the smooth side or the textured side? I paint on both. I like painting on the smooth side because it's fast, but sometimes that textured side can look more like a canvas, but I really pile it up with lots of just a, a primer coat, just white paint or gesso, so that the texture is not so extreme. It's pretty extreme without putting a lot of paint on it first. My favorite is the smooth side. 
I don't like the interference of texture, typically. I don't recommend using that masonite board for long-term use. You know, if you want to do a piece that you want to save for years and years, I, I just have fear about that particle board deteriorating. But it makes a nice backing if you stretch canvas over, over the top of it. So then there's more to this comment. Also, I haven't seen you tone your surface before painting. I had a hard time even understanding what toning means. You know, I, I don't have any official education in art other than the few things I was taught in high school that I had, you know, years went by before I started actually trying to apply any kind of artistic knowledge. Uh, toning, though, I, I imagine it as, as applying layers and colors to try to get lightness, darkness values. You know, when you tone, tone wood and wood finishing, it usually means putting a translucent layer over it to change the overall color. Well, whatever it means. There's a lot of fancy techniques out there, but the number one thing is understanding what the colors need to be and getting them in the right places. There's a lot of techniques that people jump into and they're, they're a poor replacement for just understanding where the color needs to go and why. Because the differences that you get from one technique to another in applying the same colors are, are small differences. The differences that you get from knowing whether you should have a blue here or a green or a red, those, those are huge differences. So, so I recommend just focusing on learning where to put the colors and doing it however brings you the most joy. And then add, add those fancy techniques uh, uh, on top of that knowledge as you practice that understanding. I, I, I don't like to get bogged down with, with the pressure that talented artists can sometimes put on you to do things this traditional way. This is how you do a great painting. You use this technique. You do that. You know, the knowledge of, of where the colors go and why is number one. And, and what shapes things. Shapes and colors, however you get them on there, you know, that's, that's a secondary thing. Jenny Wilson says, thanks, mate, from New Zealand. That's very cool. I love thinking about people across the world watching videos. It's a very cool thing. Moises de la Torre. I have no idea if I said that right. Thank you from Mexico. Very instructive information. Thank you so much, Moises. 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 Okay, here on how to paint a beach wave with oil. Moving on to, the, to this video now. Magnificent Sarah. Great username. As an artist myself, I like you and hate you for being so talented. You're also very attractive. So boy, is my brain confused as to just how much more talented than me you are. Well, thank you very much. First of all, Magnificent Sarah. Uh, if it's true that I'm attractive, I won't be for long. I'm 36 years old and I feel like I'm going on 50 with this new baby at the house. And life is just cruising by super fast, but thank you for that kind compliment. And if it's true that I'm talented, then I have a responsibility to be a good steward of that talent. And that's just what I'm trying to do. I didn't make my talent, and if it left me, I couldn't, I couldn't recreate it. So it's hard for me to take any credit. It's hard for there to be any room for, for pride when it comes to talent. And thank God that the value of a person is not measured by talent. Then Paul Turner says, I love these wave paintings. How about some ocean rocks and headlands? Great suggestion, Paul. I'm definitely going to keep that in mind. That would, that would be really good content for some, for some sea paintings. And then again, Chris T. I just realized I got Chris T twice. Hey, Chris T, thanks for watching my videos. I really appreciate that. You make it look easy. Great job. I picked out that comment because I want you to know that I do try hard and to be fair on that how to paint beach wave with oils painting that was that was like my fourth take I kept messing up and redoing things and, and it doesn't make for a good how-to video when you're fixing what you what you just said was the way to do something so I had to try several times before I got it where I liked it and you, you know I think that knowing it is really valuable. Sometimes 
I wonder how much is is really talent and how much is really is really just kind of like one comment that I really liked on one of my videos in the past was he must have cheat codes or something. <laughs> I, was, I thought that was funny, you know, cheat codes. But it's kind of like that when you when you know the secret to why something looks good or bad. Once you know, you know. You never have to go back to not knowing. Anyway, let me encourage you that uh, I do try hard. I do have bad days, and uh, including this video, doing this aspen tree. This, this was take two on this one. I failed on the first one. So keep up the good work out there. I really appreciate you watching my videos, and we'll see you next time.